Ozark Highlands Radio is brought to you by the Ozark Folk Center State Park in Mountain View, Arkansas, a wonderful way to enjoy yesterday. On the web at (laughs) OzarkFolkCenter.com. Howdy, folks. This is Dave Smith, host of Ozark Highlands Radio. Welcome to our show. On this week's show, we'll be hearing from a wonderful singer-songwriter from Portland, Oregon, the lovely Avery Hill. I'll also be playing some tunes from Stone County's own Flathoof String Band. Writer, professor, and historian Brooks Blevins will profile an old ballad about a famous Arkansas Civil War battle. And my pal Mark Jones will feature another gem from the vault. All that this week on Ozark Highlands Radio. The credit for Avery Hill's musical studies goes to her parents. Her father, who made her first mixtape when she was 10 years old and took her on yearly pilgrimages to the various folk festivals of New England, and her mother, who made sure she had musical lessons and instruments from third grade through high school graduation. Now she's making waves in the world of folk music. We recorded these original songs of hers last summer when she visited here at the Ozark Folk Center. What work needed be done, that's the work she'd do. When her stomach swelled one summer, it was a brand new start and a whole different work to do. Just a simple woman, just a simple life, you'd say, with a house to clean and kids to feed. But there's something to be said, I think, for living your life in one place. And when I look into the mirror, sometimes I think I see a little bit of her.
to give something to this world that this world can understand. Thank you very much. Well, actually, the first time I came was uh, a while ago. I was just so taken with the the tradition of traditional music and and community singing here, and so I knew I wanted to keep keep in touch with with folks here. So um, I came back on my first tour in 2014 with a friend of mine, um, and then I came back a third time. And we came. That was really that project was about purposely coming here to the Midwest and to the South in search of this tradition of folk music and what we as singer-songwriters of the modern day can learn from this, from these older songs, from the tradition of singing together. Um, we just don't have many opportunities to sing together as a community. And I really think that as a, as a folk artist myself, um, part of the privilege that I have is I get to write my own songs and perform them for people. But part of my responsibility is bringing people into that tradition as well and reminding them of the musician that's in all of us, that music is not just a performance art, it's a folk art as well that all folks uh, are welcome into. Oh, I've lived in this hill for many a year, many a year have I. Each day I walk down the hill into town just to say, Hello and goodbye I walk by the baker I walk by the school I go read the paper Just to see what's in the news When it gets dark I walk back up the hill Back up the hill do I For I have done what I wanted to do I have said Hello and goodbye Now I've lived in this town All of my life All of my years have I I know everyone And I call them by name When I say Hello and goodbye I shake hands with my neighbors I wave to my friends I go see the preacher just to make my amends And when it gets dark, I walk back up the hill Back up the hill do I For I have done what I wanted to do I have said hello and goodbye I think in today's 
world and the way that music is produced and distributed uh, in the mainstream, um, we think that music is primarily a performance art. But it, it really isn't. That's not where its roots lie, that it's really about expressing what it means to be human, expressing the emotions and the stories of regular everyday people. And that's what mainstream music does as well. I mean, that's what all music does. But to remember that everybody has a place in that tradition of, of music and to um, just to encourage people to explore that. There are lots of people, um, some folks who are retired, some folks who are working, some folks who are kids, um, learning a musical instrument. And, you know, nobody says that when you learn a musical instrument, you have to become the best at it or you have to perform it for an audience. That's that's really not the point, even though that's often the model that we're given. So in my teaching, that particular project was very inspirational for me in my approach to teaching musical instruments and songs and singing, um, to simply enjoy it, find what you enjoy most about it and make it part of your life. It's a lot cheaper than therapy and it makes you a lot happier. <laughs> Headlights crawl across my ceiling Wait for mom and dad to get home But I can never sleep on these hot summer nights So I creep the carpet downstairs on tiptoe And by day I play ball on the green grass Drink from red coke bottles and chew pink bubble gum But here in the pitch black of our living room I am in orbit around a single white sun And who will I find when I turn the knob? A gigantic robot, the thing, or the blob? Now the moon, perfectly framed in the window The screens leave the night exposed I settle in with a glass of milk and a plate of Oreos Waiting for the show to begin Well tonight, it's the creature from the Black Lagoon A man in a fish suit on screen But I've never been so afraid in my life I can't bear to look, but I can't wait to see his face. He surprises her in the hotel and looks so disappointed when she cries for help. Now the moon perfectly framed in the window. The screens leave the night exposed. I settle in with a glass of milk and a plate of Oreos But I don't want the show to end No, sometimes I wonder Is that what I have? Am I just another mistake from the lab? And could I be an alien? And could that be why My numbers and letters at school make me cry? Lights crawl across my ceiling Mom tucks the sheets around my bed But I can never sleep on these hot summer nights And I don't want this show to end Thank you well, um, like my dad, I wanted to be a teacher, and so I was sort of walking that, that path of becoming a classroom teacher. But it became increasingly clear to me over time that the presence of music in my life was a different kind of presence than it might have been to lots of other people, that it was this way I saw the world and the way that I am in the world. I couldn't be who I was without having music really at, at the center or at least a, a very large part. And so I applied my teaching skills to the music. That was how I became a music teacher and also began to understand the process of writing songs and learning traditional songs and sharing them with, with audiences as a way of teaching as well. Um, I mean, I think a really good performance is 
educational in some way, um, and you just have to kind of find your your voice. But I. Um, I started to feel like that was the place for my voice to grow, and it allowed me to be both a student and a teacher to continue to grow, um, but also to sort of share what I, what I had found along the way. Lovers come and lovers go. I watch them ebb and flow with the tides of the night. Rare are those who bear their minds who never tire of this life Who dance with the tides of the night I met you beneath the stars And that is when I knew I wonder just who you are I wonder what it is to know you in the tides of your life. I want to Portland, Oregon folk musician Avery Hill. Avery played her original songs, Something This World Will Understand, Hello and Goodbye, Summer 1957, and I Want to Know. We'll hear more from Avery later in the show. After the break, I think I'll head down to the vault to see if Mark Jones has found any gems from the archives. This is Ozark Highlands Radio.
Every week about this time, I like to go down to the vault to see what new old music Mark Jones has picked out for us to listen to this week. So let's take a trip down there and see what's going on. Hey, Mark. Mark, you down here? Mark? Hey, oh, Dave. Gee, Mark, you scared the bejeebers out of me. You, it's dark down here, man. You need to get some more light bulbs in this place. Well, I, I like scaring you oh. every chance. Well, it worked good that time. Well, Mark, what have you been finding for us this week down here? Well, I was down here the other day, and I'm I just remembering some of the characters that I knew in the early years when I first moved to this part of the country, and I bet you remember Aunt Ollie Gilbert. I do remember Aunt Ollie. She's played the banjo. She knew lots and lots of songs, some of them ancient ballads and some of them modern country songs, and that lady could tell a story or tell a oh, joke, too. Oh, yeah. She was a good storyteller. And just, uh, she was a character, just a lot of fun to be around. And I found a recording of her. She was on the first year they had the folk festival in the Ozark Folk Center, brand new building. And Ann Ollie was on that night. And uh, it's just, it's great. I, I'd love for you to listen to it. Okay. You know, it's something about Ann Ollie. She was re collected by some of the first ballad collectors who came around. I think uh, Max Hunter collected songs from her as well as other uh, song catchers as well. That's true. Well, what have you got for us? Well, she's telling a little story about... Uh, it's just that you just need to listen to it. Okay, let's see what it is. Here's Jimmy Driftwood introducing Ollie Gilbert at the Folk Center in 1973. Now, I'll tell you, if you don't care, now she knows 10 million old tales. Would you like to have her tell you an old tale? Wait till get talking. get talking. Okay. <clears throat> Said this man lived out in the age of the jungles, and one day he's fixing to go a hunting, and a preacher come by. And he says, "Hey, where are you going?" Said, "I'm going a hunting." Says, "Can I go with you?" Said, "You can if you want to." Said they got out a little ways in the jungle, and that man named him. Said, "Lord, what if we meet a bear?" He says, "The good Lord be with us." Said they hadn't went just a little ways. Here come one on his hind feet. Went around the tree. That boy had grabbed him with the tail. He just slanged him every way. He says, go get help. The preacher says, the good Lord's with us. I'd have been one preacher got whipped if I'd have been him, wouldn't you? <laughs> so he said, he just slung him, <laughs> slung him round and round, you know. He just had him wore out, and he turned the bear loose. And he stepped up to the preacher. He says, I thought you told me the good Lord is with us. Well, he says he is good for a lot of things, but ain't worth a damn to bear a fight. <laughs> well, Mark, that sounded like one of her stories, all right. Oh, she was funny. She'd get you all the time. You know, I remember that Aunt Ollie kept lots of her songs and stories written down in real small print on adding machine tape. She had big rolls of adding machine tape with all these jokes and stories and songs written on them. I wonder what happened to them when she passed on. Boy, I don't know. I, I know it's, I don't know if any of her family got it or not, but there are, there are quite a few Gilberts still uh, living in this area, and I'm sure they're kin to Aunt Ollie somehow. Well, that would be a treasure to have one of those old adding machine tapes, it wouldn't it? It would. Well, Mark, thanks a lot for coming up with that old story for us. Well, thank you, Dave. I'll see you next week. Hope so. We're really fortunate here at the Ozark Folk Center to have some top-notch musicians living here locally and appearing regularly on our nightly programs or during the day in the Craft Village. The interestingly named Flat Hoof String Band is Wes Kent on mandolin, Mike Sutter on guitar, Gresham McMillan on bass, and fiddler Roger Fountain. Let's head down to the stage for a set of five songs by the Flat Hoof String Band. I'm going back to where I come from, where the mockingbirds are singing in the lilac bush. I'm going back to where I come from, where the honeysuckle smells so sweet it darn near makes you sick. I used to think that life was humdrum. But I finally learned a lesson that is bound to stick I used to go down 
to that city Every evening where I'd sit and watch that train come rolling in And then one night, that great temptation Got the best of me and led me to a life of sin I got my hat and fourteen dollars And I went off to the city And the life that always follows when you're rich And hunting romance And I reckon that I'll never do that no more I met this gal in Kansas City she winked at me and asked me, would you like to step around? And I said, yup, yeah, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> she said, I'll take you to the hottest spots in town. There were some things she had to fix up. So she took my $14 and I guess there was a mix up. She's been gone since Tuesday morning. And I reckon that I'll never do that no more when I grow up and have a grandson I'll tell him about my romance and I'll watch his eyes bug out and chances are he won't believe me he'll have to go and do the same that burnt things no doubt now you can't say I didn't warn him what'll happen if he mixes with them city gals doggone him I'm going back to where I come from where the mockingbirds are singing in the lilac bush. <laughs> so that's what, and the Flathoof Band came up from, uh, Roger said, well, if we do it, what sort of name? And I said, well, um, I used to play out here for Caroline Rainbolt. And she always said, you know, to Sam Younger and, and Luther Horton and, and uh, myself and Irvin Freeze, she said, uh, I'm a Flathoofer. I said, oh, that's what you call that there jig dance. And she said, yeah, I call it flat hoofing. You know, I flat hoofed all my life. And she was at that point probably near 90 years old and was dancing every day for us. And I thought that would be a fitting name at those Ark Folk Center for a band. You know, and since Roger and I and Wes and Gresham love playing for dances, you know, I mean, I'm, you know, I just see myself as a back, a really good dance guitarist, you know, and I was, you know, a dry, I, I work at driving it, you know, so that, so the whole band pushes, and this whole group does. So I thought, let's name it the Flathoof Band, mm -hmm. the original Flathoof String Band. I'll tell you a story about a burglar man who started to rob a house. He peeked in the window and he crept just as quietly as a mouse. Just thinking about the money he found there's under the bed he lay. But he certainly saw a sight that night that made his hair turn gray. About nine o'clock, an old maid came in. I'm so tired, she said, just to think, and that all was well. She forgot to look under the bed. Well, she took out her teeth and her big glass eye and her hair right off of her head. And the burglar man, he had 19 fits since he came from under the bed. From under the bed, that burglar crept, he was a total wreck. Well, the old maid, she didn't holler at all, she just grabbed him around the neck. And from her waist, a revolver she drew, and to this burglar said, Young man, if you don't marry me, I'll blow off the top of your head. <laughs> well, he looked at her teeth and her big glass eye, and he had no place to scoot. So he said to the old maid standing by, Woman, for goodness sake, shoot! <laughs> Mike and Roger and I uh, were teaching school together uh, in the elementary school here in our town uh, through the Music Roots program that we do here. So we had some break times and down times, and we began to play and visit with each other. We're friends. All of us yeah. are friends. Yeah. And uh, we, we have a great time together, and uh, we just brought... Uh, the various backgrounds that we have together. I can play different instruments and still learning uh, to play some things. And, and uh, so it all, it's all going together really well and we're having a good time doing it. So yeah. that's, that's uh, basically my story. And so I'm gonna sing a Jimmy Driftwood song tonight uh, that's called Down in the Arkansas. And I want you to sing back with me. I'm gonna do a couple of, couple of the choruses and you sing to me, it goes real simple. Down in the Arkin, down in the Arkin, down in the Arkansas. 
The prettiest girl I ever saw was down in the ark and saw. Do that again. Down in the ark and down in the ark and down in the ark and saw. The prettiest girl I ever saw was down in the ark and saw. I had a cow that slobbered bad down in the ark and saw. I took her to my great granddad down in the ark and saw. I asked him what to do for it down in the ark and saw. Said to teach that cow to spit down in the Arkansas. Down in the ark and down in the ark and down in the Arkansas. Prettiest girl I ever saw was down in the I knew a man and his name was Jack down in the Arkansas. He had a hog called Razorback down in the Arkansas. The strangest thing you ever hear down in the Arkansas. He used that hog to shave his beard down in the Arkansas. Down in the Arkansas, down in the Arkansas, down in the Arkansas. Prettiest gal I ever saw was down in the Arkansas. I knew a man and his name was Bill down in the Arkansas. He hooked that gal all over the hill down in the Arkansas. Her pa ran up and called him son down in the Arkansas. They tied the knot with a rifle gun down in the Arkansas. Down in the Arkansas, down in the Arkansas, down in the Arkansas. Prettiest gal I ever saw was down in the Arkansas. They had a wedding that couldn't be beat down in the Arkansas. A boy named Goats and a girl named Wheat down in the Arkansas. The kinfolk sang in the major key down in the Arkansas. They sang, what shall the harvest be down in the Arkansas? Down in the Arkansas, down in the Arkansas, down in the Arkansas. Prettiest girl I ever saw was down in the Arkansas. Drank the tea that's made from corn down in the Arkansas. It makes you a man the day you're born down in the Arkansas. Down in the Arkansas, down in the Arkansas, down in the Arkansas. Prettiest gal I ever saw was down in the Arkansas. When I was just a little lad down in the Arkansas, my ma got married to my dad down in the Arkansas. Granddad got mad and cussed a while down in the Arkansas till Grandma said that's the latest style down in the Arkansas. Down in the Arkansas, down in the Arkansas, down in the Arkansas. Prettiest gal I ever saw was down in the Arkansas. It's just the people I've met over the years, and you know, playing music would get you through a lot of hard time. You don't know too many times. I come to the folk center to play, and no matter what I've been going through at home, no matter what I've been stressed about, when I start playing music, it all goes away. I mean, <laughs> you know, yeah, start playing music, you know, you forget yeah, yeah. what's been troubling you, what you yeah. know, and it got me through some mighty hard times. I was young and foolish, I thought that I would marry So I fell in love with a pretty little girl, her name was Devilish Mary do 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 Well, we hadn't been married but a day when all the trouble started She combed my hair with a rolling pin to make sure it was parted do 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 do
Well, says I, it's very good to have this fine relation. Shut up, she said, you'll do the work. I'll do the conversation. Do, 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 do. Well, she washed my pants with old soap suds and sewed them up with stitches. She gave to me the prettiest dress and said, I'll wear the britches. Well, says I, this is the end. I will not stand no more. That's right, she said, you've had enough and threw me out the door. If I ever more do wed, I'll marry just for riches. I'll pick a gal just two feet tall that can put on my britches. Do 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 Thank you. I, lo I love to sing uh, a lot of novelty songs from the 1920s. And someone asked me one time, well, Wes, what kind of song do you like to sing? And that was my answer. And they said, well, that's kind of narrow. And I said, yeah, but they're funny and they're clean. And uh, my grandchildren have learned to sing songs for me. And I hear them singing. And uh, I was relating to my daughter that I had seen a young girl here in Mountain View carrying her little... Uh, sibling around singing to the child and I was telling my daughter and she said oh well your grandson did that and I said oh he did and he said yeah he used to carry a sister around singing songs that he learned from you dad and, <laughs> and uh, I said well well what what song did he sing and she said uh, I came home the other night drunk as I could be <laughs> <laughs> oh, a kid, though. Yeah. Oh, geez. <laughs> That was the Flathoof String Band playing I'm Going Back, The Old Maid and the Burglar Man, a song attributed to the late Jimmy Driftwood called Down in the Arkansas, Devilish Mary, and the classic Good Night Irene. When we come back after the break, historian Brooks Blevins will continue his piece about Civil War songs of Arkansas. You're listening to Ozark Highlands Radio. I'll try the one of P. Ridge. 
It was on March the 7th in the year of 62. We had a sore engagement with a Lincoln's crew. Van Dorn was our commander, as you remember me. We lost 10,000 of our men in the Indian Territory. They may not have lost 10,000 men, as the song suggests, and General Price certainly did not receive a fatal gunshot wound, but the Battle of Pea Ridge was not a positive experience for the boys in gray. Like many ballads passed down through oral tradition, the version of the Battle of Pea Ridge that music collector Max Hunter recorded in Eureka Springs, Arkansas in 1958 was not a paragon of historical accuracy. You remember that old game we used to play as kids, post office or telephone we called it, in which a little story is whispered from one ear to the next and invariably comes out of the last hearer's mouth as at best a loose adaptation of the original? Well, imagine playing that game over the course of a century or even multiple centuries. It's surprising the name of the song survived intact. In this second of a three-part series on Ozark Civil War ballads, we go back in the hills to a bloody and divisive age in the early spring of 1862. Not only was Pea Ridge the largest battle fought on Ozark soil, it was the most crucial in deciding the fate of the people and lands west of the Mississippi River, and it largely answered the questions still hanging in the air seven months after the Battle of Wilson's Creek, the subject of our previous segment. On the northern side of our story, Abraham Lincoln and his military advisors had settled on substance over style in Missouri in the latter days of 1861, when American hero and politically connected John C. Fremont, the old pathfinder himself, proved to be an overly cautious and pompous general known more for his private company of Hungarian bodyguards than for his leadership abilities, he was replaced by the much blander and certainly more dour Samuel R. Curtis. General Curtis's soldiers in blue advanced down the road from Rolla to Springfield in the winter of 1862 and pushed Missouri's rebel army under the command of General Sterling Price out of Springfield. The Union Army eventually pursued the Southerners all the way into northwestern Arkansas. Waiting for the rebels in Arkansas was back up in the form of a Confederate army, the same one that had helped Price and his Missouri soldiers defeat the Union Army at Wilson's Creek the previous summer. By now, though, the Confederates also had a new leader, one quite different from the Union commander, one possessed of more style than substance. General Earl Van Dorn was a dashing Mississippian, a personal friend of Confederate President Jefferson Davis. Upon arriving in Arkansas just a few weeks earlier, General Van Dorn had entertained visions of bold invasions and grand conquests. He informed his subordinates that he planned to gather his troops, more than 15,000 of them, march and ride through Missouri and capture St. Louis. It was just the kind of daring escapade befitting a man who would ultimately die not on the battlefield, but at the wrong end of a jealous husband's smoking pistol. But the unwelcomed arrival of a Union army of some 12,000 troops on Arkansas soil scuttled the assault on St. Louis. Hesitant to march too far southward into enemy territory, General Curtis and his Union Army camped on a broad plateau northeast of the present-day town of Rogers in the vicinity of a popular stagecoach stop called Elkhorn Tavern. The Confederates, who often gave battles different names than the ones we recognize today, would call their upcoming fight the Battle of Elkhorn Tavern. Eager to drive the Yankees out of Arkansas and perhaps resume plans for an expedition to St. Louis, Confederate General Van Dorn devised an ill-conceived plan that involved marching his tired, underfed, and poorly supplied troops around the Union Army to cut off their escape route and attack them from the rear. Marching through wintry weather and slowed by piles of felled logs and treetops that the Yankees had cut to impede attackers, the rebels failed to make it all the way around their enemy's army, and to make their bad situation worse, they were discovered by Union soldiers. So it was the Yankees, not the Southerners, who did the attacking on the morning of March 7, 1862. The Battle of Pea Ridge raged for a day and a half. It was really almost two separate battles, with the armies fighting each other on both sides of a rise known as Big Mountain. By the time Van Dorn ordered his rebel army to retreat on the second day of the battle, his troops were running out of ammunition, and most of them had not had a thing to eat in more than 24 hours. 
The Northern victory at Pea Ridge secured the Union Army's control over Missouri, a key factor to winning the war in the West. It was a devastating loss for the larger Confederate Army, made even more disastrous for the Southerners when General Van Dorn took his whole army across the Mississippi, leaving the state of Arkansas open to invasion by General Curtis's Union troops. For Ozark music collector Max Hunter, the ballad The Battle of Pea Ridge had a special significance. It was the first song he ever performed in public at the 10th annual meeting of the Arkansas Folklore Society. Here's Max Hunter performing the song that he learned from Allie Long Parker of Hogscald Holler, Arkansas. The recording was made June 21st, 1958. I know you brave Missouri boys were never yet afraid. Let's try and form an order retreat the best we can. The word retreat was passed around it raised the heathen cry. Helter skelter through the woods like lost sheep they did fly. Though this week's guest artist Avery Hill studied to be a school teacher, an environmental educator, and then a storyteller, all of these things eventually led her back to music, the thing she knows and loves best of all. She's now based out of Portland, Oregon, where she teaches music privately and regularly gets out of town to tour different regions of the country. Here are a couple more songs she sang for us when she visited us here at the Ozark Folk Center State Park. So I borrowed it for this song. The story and the title. This is Lover's Leap. on that ledge high above the river's edge where lovers take their flight a young Indian maiden who couldn't have her lover true flew into the light but how can you be so sure It was really love she lived for. Have you ever been up there? Have you ever had to bear the burden of what you see from that height? Oh, if I took a lover's leap off into the mighty Mississippi, it's only because I know reminds us and water is what guides us home I can see her over there moonlight spills upon her hair and he's bent down on one You're not where you should be But how can you be so sure That it was just a ghost she left for Have you ever held a map Walked across some distant path You can only see in your mighty Mississippi it's only cause I know all. sometimes you have to be your own hero and blood is what reminds us and water is what guides us home Ooh. I hear her voice. 
her blood beneath my skin Her face a feather in my wings Her story is not mine to tell But I've got dreams and ghosts as well And as I fly I hear her sing You can never be It's so fascinating to me, um, as somebody who interprets folk songs for performance, I try not to overthink it too much because that's one of, my down, one of my downfalls. But it is so interesting to me, um, I would love to know more about how people make the decisions that they do in adapting the songs, because I think um, that is one of our one of our responsibilities, as I said before, as, as folk artists, is to sort of honor that tradition that we've come from, even if we're creating new material which you know is is good work as well, to keep rooted in the in the older material. But it always, I always have to wonder to myself, why did I make that choice? Why did I choose to go this way? Why didn't I sing it this way? And you know, part of it is just bringing your own voice to it, what feels natural, what yeah. truth you find in it. But I'm always curious to hear how different people interpret. That was the joy of seeing um, Jamie Stone and the Lomax Project last night, how they interpreted some songs that I was very familiar with. Um, they just took it off in a completely different direction, and that's just always so exciting to see. I mean, I think we need folks like them to really push it far, because I'm not somebody who's gonna push it very far, because I'm still based in my guitar work, or, you know, who knows, maybe I'll put it all to ukulele and that'll, <laughs> that'll ukulele really throw it off. <laughs> ukulele and whistling, <laughs> that's right. Um, but I think that that's part of our jobs, you know, is that we we have to push things, and it's, and it's true. I mean, it's not always gonna match up to everybody's tastes, but somebody out there is gonna be really intrigued, and somebody out there, too, is gonna be invited into the tradition through that that particular rendition of it. So that's the other thing to remember, um, is that we're welcoming people into a tradition that they may not be familiar with. So this song is called Road to Colorado. They say a man in his prime is a true sight to see, enough to make boys jealous and women swoon. He swaggers through the town and he mounts his gallant steed, rides off beneath the rising moon. Once there was a time when I was such a man, but these days I find I must convince myself that I still am. As is usually the case, the trip was conceived by the most important women I know. My mother, my sister, and my wife all agreed we should vacation in Colorado. How lovely, they said, to bring the babies along, haul their bottles and cloth diapers too. This is 1920, right? Cloth diapers? That's an important detail for, for later. My brother-in-law said he too would have gone, but for a pressing business matter to attend to. How this ride would end, I knew that it was up to me to take charge of my steed and herd. So I loaded up the bags with a cowboy's dignity in a 1919 Hudson 7 passenger on the road to Colorado. Don't know how, but I know why. On the road to Colorado. Another line across my brow for this family of mine. Now it's evident. 
every cowboy's dream to be out on open plains without a care without a single doubt till babies need to eat and their mothers to complain you're left no choice but to dismount if you've never tried to find a tree in kansas for to rest then my friends believe me you've been spared for it's only you'll find all too happy to attest to their keen sense for simple human fare on the road to Colorado don't know how but I know why on the road to Colorado another line across my brow for this family of mine well it's true I have no horse have no hat nor pair of boots and they say a man is just a man but lately I sense God and this road are in cahoots against me though I do the best I can we reached Wichita that night stopped at the local inn to execute our grandest operation the clothesline held the diapers and the sterno stove was rigged to treat bottles to optimal sterilization. And in the morning when we left, all those diapers still not dry, I protested, but alas, to no avail. They were hung out the car windows with all my manly pride and the white flags of truce thus did prevail on the road to Colorado don't know how but I know why on the road to Colorado another line across my brow for this family of mine <laughs> that was Avery Hill singing her original songs Lover's Leap and The Road to Colorado. For more information about Avery and about our show, visit us at ozarkhighlandsradio.com or like us on Facebook. Or come visit us here in Mountain View, Arkansas. It's a pretty cool place. For all of us here at Ozark Highlands Radio, I'm Dave Smith. So long, everybody. Ozark Highlands Radio is produced by Jeff Glover. Executive producer is Darren Dorton. Additional support for this program comes from the Committee of 100, proudly supporting the Ozark Folk Center State Park since 1974. And by Arkansas State Parks, with 52 unique reasons to visit the natural state. More information online at arkansasstateparks.com. For information on upcoming shows and events, we are on the web at ozarkhighlandsradio.com. Until next time, I'm Donna Farrar.